Are you ready to make the best looking 3D here in After Effects? No joke, it's now easier than ever to create detailed 3D scenes with realistic lighting and shadows and we can also take advantage of the new depth of field option to give your work that easy cinematic touch. When I say always be creating at the end of these tutorials, there's a reason for it. At the beginning of this year, I didn't think making something like this in After Effects was possible, or at least it just wouldn't be efficient doing it here in After Effects, uh, but what took me forever to learn will hopefully just take you five minutes to learn. When creating a 3D scene, I always suggest making a floor first by creating a solid layer. In this case, the solid layer will be a dark gray color. Then make it a 3D layer, set the X rotation to 90 degrees, and then adjust the Y position to lower the floor, and lastly, increase the scale like a madman. This way, you'll have essentially an infinite floor for shadows and just for your reference. Now, the next thing to do is make sure you are in advanced 3D, which is generally the optimal renderer for building 3D inside of After Effects. But now with the basics out of the way, I would start by creating your master or at least central 3D object. I'm gonna use the rounded rectangle tool, but you can use any shape tool that you want. With the shape that you create, make sure that it's centered. If you're using a rectangle, we can adjust the roundness to make the edges even smoother. Now, let's actually make this layer 3D, and because we need this to sit on the floor, set the X rotation to 90 degrees, and it's gone. Go to the extrusion depth and increase to any size that you think works for you. Boom, 3D object. Now, to take advantage of the floor, lower the Y position until the object clips into, well, the floor. Okay, we're getting there, but for now, let's set up the scene for success. At this point, let's create a camera layer and by using the camera tools here at the top, we can angle our way into viewing the top of the scene and reposition our camera view to the center. But don't worry too much about the view or angle yet. This is just a setup and that's why you shouldn't trust me. Let's expand on our objects real fast by duplicating it and turning off the fill. We can then enable stroke and set the color to say white. If we lower the Y position of the inner shape, we now have a unique element. At this point, it's hard to visualize how the scene will look, so back to setting up for success, we'll create an environment light which is only available in Advanced 3D. Make sure Cast Shadows is turned on, and overall not much has changed, but this is where you can import an HDRI into your project and set it as your source. You can usually find HDRIs for free with a quick search or get the one that I'm using with the provided project files. Always mess around with the intensity and the rotation to get the right look. However, you need to keep in mind every 3D object has its own material properties. So for example, I can go into our 3D outline here and adjust any of these material properties. For instance, I can adjust the metal and the specular options to get a unique look. Anyways, we're still not there yet, but we got the basics out of the way. And speaking of the basics, before we move on, you can crunch down on your animations and save hours of time by using our free animation presets. You can select any type of graphic or title, browse a preset, and watch your project come to life in seconds. You can utilize over 10,000 presets by checking the description below. All right, let's expand on the scene by adding in other objects. For instance, we can duplicate our base square and position it over. And I would highly recommend using two views and setting the right view to top so we can easily see the gaps between our objects. But let's set this shape to a light gray and lower its Y position. You can also change the bevel style to convex. So by using the setup, you can quickly duplicate, change the size of the objects, and place this around your central objects to start building out your scene. And it's so cool seeing how these shadows update. And while we're here, this is a good time to throw in some titles or graphics into your scene. Just make them 3D layers, adjust the X rotation by 90 or negative 90 degrees, and then adjust the Y position to place them on top of your 3D objects. Once your graphic clips into your 3D objects, you can bounce them back out so they're laying right on top. Now, at this time, I would also create a null object and make it a 3D layer. Then parent your camera to it, and by animating the Y rotation, you can easily create a 360 degree movement around the central part of your scene and this really did come together just fine but we can always expand the scene even further instead of duplicating all these shapes with the gray rectangles along the edges you know like i did we can just duplicate one box move it over and enable draft 3d 
and then click the extended view so we can see outside of our composition. Then in the same shape layer, we'll draw a bunch of random squares to quickly build out the rest of our scene without experiencing the hassle of duplicating a million times. The shadows, the movement, and our objects look really cool, but you know what would make this even better? Depth of field. Real depth of field is now possible in After Effects, but as of right now, it's only available in the beta version of After Effects, but you can get the beta right now from your Creative Cloud app. All you need to do is pre-compose everything and then apply the new 3D channel extract effect. Adjust the black and white points until the foreground is darker than the background. Duplicate your pre-comp and delete the effect on the top layer. Next, create an adjustment layer and apply the camera lens blur effect. Set the blur map to your matte layer and set it to effects and mask. Then just increase the blur amount and this is a crazy new feature. However, to smooth this out a little better, you can apply the depth of field effect under the extract effect. Then adjust the focal plane, radius, and bias to make the blur look natural. I'm not sure if this is the right or most efficient way to create this depth of field at this moment, but it works. Subscribe to be the best and always be creating.